Hi, Julie Jones from SSB Performance, Smarter, Stronger, Better Mindset Training, here with this week's Mindset Made Simple Tip of the Week, brought to you by Game Day Sportswear. This week we're talking about selfish or selfless, managing the fudge that comes along with performance. We know this, no one's perfect. No one has ever played a perfect game. No one has ever done the perfect talk. There is always something that doesn't go right, whether it's the pass is just a little bit short, we swing and we miss, we shoot and miss, we forget to tell that great story in our speech, whatever it is, there is always something that goes wrong. No one is perfect. And when we sign up for competition, when we sign up to do something that's worth anything, we are going to encounter failure, uncertainty, disappointment, growth, which sounds good, but we don't like it because it's uncomfortable, and errors, fudge. The fudge that comes with doing something and putting ourselves out there and performing, which we all do, no matter what our profession. So, we know that we're not perfect. We like to try to be perfect. No one has ever gotten there yet. In fact, we try so hard, do you think if it was available that we'd be pretty good at it by now? We know we're not perfect. We know that these things are coming when we perform, and yet we act as if we're shocked or so disappointed we cannot believe that we made that mistake or, oh my gosh, no one told me this was going to happen. We know better than that. Even so, our responses, or should I say our reactions, act as if this like came out of nowhere. So what does this do? To us, what does this do to our teams? I was meeting with one of my Division One teams last week, and we talked about this. Responses to mistakes, responses to disappointment, responses to failure, responses to being uncomfortable. Whatever those things are, our responses change what happens around us. In fact, they often affect what's going to happen next and not in a real positive way. I went as far to say as it is a selfish response that we often throw out there to our teammates or whoever it is that we're working with, as if we didn't think this was going to happen. So the question is, how do we respond better to try to help the situation and understand, hey, we know that this is going to happen. Let's not be selfish about it. How can we be more selfless and think of ourselves less? Because the problem is this. We make a mistake and we change. That's one of the first things I ask everybody that I work with individually. If I walked up to a field and everything was going great for you, what would I see? What would I feel? What would I hear? What would it be like? And then I ask them to flip the coin over and say, if I walked up and I watched you make a mistake, or if I walked up and it wasn't a great day, what would I see? What would I hear? What would I feel? What is that? What's that package look like? And you know their responses when they're, Things are going well, they talk more, they've got great potty posture, you know, everything's, they're just up, right? They're looking up, they're talking, they're bringing in information, all those things. And then the opposite of that happens when there's a mistake or when things aren't going well. Again, we act like it's not going to happen. And yet, as soon as it happens, we act like it's never happened before. Oh my gosh. To avoid this and to avoid being selfish, because that's really what it is, if we think about it, it's selfish behavior. And selfish behavior does not help us, nor does it help the team. I used to ask, just like you, set the goals at the beginning of the year. Inevitably, a kid would come in and say, I want to get a hit every time I get up this year. Ridiculous, I would say. Ridiculous. One guy has hit 400 in Major League Baseball, and they're the best hitters in the world. One guy. You know him, number nine, best number ever. Now I ask the softball teams that I work with, I ask the leadoff hitter, what's, you know, what's expected of you? Well, my job is to get on, get on base. No, that's not your job. Why? Why is it not your, I know I'm so encouraging, right? But that's not your job. You don't control getting on base. So how can that really be the expectation? Yes, of course, we want you to get on base. That is part of the game. That's the goal. 
but you don't control that. So what is expected of you? Part of our problem with our responses is the fact that we set ourselves up for failure because we have unrealistic expectations or we don't plan for the fact that something might go wrong. So what do we need to do? It's time to start setting some rules. You can start by going to the website, ssbperformance.com, backslash downloads, download my four, four step performance cycle. It's the action, or I'm sorry, approach, action, result, and response. And we can think about setting some rules and thinking about what it is that we actually control. Start with our approach. We control that. It's our setup. It's our plan. That leads to our action. We pretty much control that. If our approach is good, we usually have a pretty good action. We fo we're focused, we're doing what we need to do. Then we go to our result. We don't control this. Somebody else controls this. So, it happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Rough week this week with this stuff. The next thing that we have is the response. That is how we respond to the thing that we don't control, that somebody else controls, not on our controllable list. Our response determines what happens next. As John O'Sullivan, the podcast host from The Way of Champions, says at the end of every show, your influence is never neutral. So we're always influencing the people around us in the way we hold our body and the way that we communicate and all the things that we do when we're feeling great or when we just made a mistake affect everyone around us. We know that. So what do we do? How do we manage our response? Because our response that affects our next approach, and then you can see how this cycle continues to go. Rule number one, after a mistake, change your posture. Put in a rule, whatever rule you want. Up, eyes up, chin up, talk immediately. I don't know what it is. You decide what's best for your team, and then we got to stick to it. I'm a big fan of the team reset at Cleveland State. This is what we did. The catcher would stand out in front of the plate and she would get into her uh, reset ritual, stand there, and eventually the people who were off in La La Land would rejoin those of us getting ready to make the next play and get out of their own head in their selfish mode and into the selfless thinking because they had to do something. Taking action makes a difference. Doug Novak, the assistant coach at uh, Northern Kentucky, I was down there last week working with them, he said, and this is so true, it's easier to change our actions than it is to change our thoughts. So let's start there. Change our actions. What are we going to do to get from here to where we need to be? Because this is not where we need to be. No answers are ever on the top of your shoes. The answers are out there. They're usually not in here either. It's when we get in here that we really start to fade away. And then we affect the next shot or the next play or whatever it is. So thinking about whether we're being selfish in our responses or figuring out how to be more selfless thinkers, being thinking of ourselves less, can be critical to our success. We're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Nobody's perfect. But if we can minimize those mistakes, we know that that's going to make a difference in our performance. I'd love to come work with your team too. Contact me, juliej at ssbperformance.com. Until next week, have a great week. Manage the moments. Manage our responses. Be selfless. Have a great week.